All right, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Curious Expedition 2. It's a... It's like a narrative roguelike, sort of. It, it definitely has, like, choose-your-own-adventure ele choose elements based on kind of the, what, the early 1900s? You know, going out into untamed lands, finding weird, mysterious artifacts, and so on and so forth. It's a time that, like, it existed for a very short period of, of time globally, but... It has such a unique aesthetic that I always love seeing these games go by. Anyway, we're just going to dive into a new game. I actually have never played any of these before. Uh, I know Curious Expedition 1 came out and a lot of people loved it, but I just... I don't know, just always flew under my radar. And then this came out last year in Early Access, and I had no idea. And then again, 2020 was kind of a mess, so go figure I didn't find out about anything. But it's at 1.0 now, so we're going to check it out. Anyway... I was returning for a routine expedition to Peru when we spotted a great storm brewing on the horizon. The guru prepared to divert around it, but I glimpsed something inside. Land, an island in the middle of the Atlantic where none should be. Over the protest of the ca captain, I gave orders to head to the island. Trembling but compliant, the crew steered us into the heart of the storm. The tempest raged with an unnatural fury. A strange fog enveloped us, and lightning crackled all around. The vessel was almost torn asunder by crashing waves. Yet, just when death seemed certain, we emerged from the maelstrom into an almost perfect calm. Maybe not roguelike? I thought they were roguelike-ish. No, it is, it is a roguelite. Okay. Directly ahead lay a lush tropical island, the storm safely behind us. We prepared to lay anchor and see what wonders this new land held. Okay, set a waypoint. I know this route well. The island was... This island wasn't here before. Alright, so... I've got a hundred. Well, I guess let's just go there for the time being. Okay, every move costs sanity. You pay a travel start cost every time you move. Making fewer moves is more efficient. I see. I'll see if we spot anything interesting while we're at out and around. There we go. Unknown location found. Move within two tiles to reveal it. Or we just travel straight to it because how does it matter? Explore the shipwreck. I came across an astounding discovery. The wreck of what looked like an old British naval ship. I couldn't help but wonder how it had come to rest here. I don't like the look of this. With every step we took on the strange island, we seemed to encounter another mystery. Search the ship. Carefully testing the rotten planks before entering, we made a thorough in inspection of the ship. After a time, we found several items of value. Take everything. A dead end. Use dynamite. Blast passages through mountains and tough foes. Loud de detonations do tend to bo bother the locals, however. Nothing will stand in our way. Okay, so bets on us going absolutely bonkers here. Hello. A small group of indigenous people hurry to our location, seemingly drawn by the sound of our dynamite. They seemed as shocked to see us as I was to see them. And once the initial wonder wore off, they demanded to know who we were and how we got here. Tell the truth. Boast of your great magic. Drawing myself to my full height, I proclaimed I was a shaman of great power. Gesturing to the ruined mountain behind us, I gave evidence to my power. Suitably impressed, they treated us with a newfound respect. We'd made no friends here, but fear is often more useful than love in hostile lands. Hoping to appease us, they gave us detailed instructions to their village. Where I might find rest and food, then making obvious ex excuses, they went on their way.
we are going to go bananas. Guaranteed. Okay, low sanity, consume chocolate or whiskey. I'm going to try heading for the native village first. Because I might be able to rest there and get it back normally. We approached with caution, but they welcomed us with open arms. It seemed word of our arrival has already reached the village. Interestingly, they didn't seem as shocked by our strange appearance as I would have expected. One would almost suspect that we are not the first foreign villagers. Alright, trade. Woman from the village opened a small woven box, revealing the village's trade goods. Okay, cheese, animal tooth, hide shield. Okay. Oh, offer extra items to get to standing three. Came to an agreement with the village. Meet with the ruler. I strode into the hut where the ruling council held their meetings. An elder stepped forward and greeted us with a frown. We are allowed one request. Recruit. Asked if it were possible to gather any who are bold enough to join my cause. Scout or priest. So extra view distance or more sanity. Let's see. Divine reckoning all enemies or blank. Let's go for the scout. Do I truly want to recruit Kurati, the native scout? Sure. Okay, my request granted. I bowed to the council and left them to their business. I emerged from the hut, blinking rapidly as my eyes adjusted to the light outside. Rest of the village. As darkness fell, the natives lit a campfire and invited us to sit with them. That evening, the villagers were planning a ritual dance that seemed to serve as an appeasement to the gods. They called these deities the Pelakau, a strange word s sounding foreign to their tongues. Apparently, these gods were builders of great magic artifacts. I was invited to join their dance to honor the great builders. I considered carefully, refusing might offend them, but a false step could be an even greater result. Roll green to succeed. Good luck, me. Success! The rhythm was entrancing. To my surprise, I managed to follow the complicated pattern without missing a step. I finished the dance with a flourish, and the natives erupted into cheers, clapping me jovially on the shoulder. They gave a gift to show their appreciation. The evening's activities complete, we settled in for a quiet evening by the fire before re retiring to our bedrolls. Equip your spears. Okay, select Victoria and give spear. Better on some of these other guys? Maybe not. It just says three green rolls, and I'm not sure how that works. I I guess I'm trying to apply mechanics from Fort of the King to this game. Anyway. Sleep. Alright. Our sanity has... Improved tremendously, in fact. I spent several quiet and peaceful days in the village. The natives seem undis undisturbed by my presence. Okay. Let's rest one more time. Unpacked our belongings and prepared to spend the night with the natives at their campfire. That evening, I approached one of the natives in an attempt to learn their language. Once she understood what I wanted, she was delighted to teach me. I always found that the locals of any place are delighted to share their culture with strangers. One must simply take the effort of reaching out. Though there wasn't much time to make progress during a short stay, it was a beginning, and I believe the lessons were a pleasure to us both. Now let's see if I, I can boost this back up, and then let's get out of here before they get mad at me. Sanity dips off pretty quick. Okay, so let's let's leave. We got ready and departed. As new adventurers waited us, the natives seemed indifferent to my departure. Okay, well, grand scheme of things, 
let's go up here and just see what we can get. Oh, gosh. Yeah, go figure their sanity drops. Apparently, they've been here for two months already. As we venture deeper into the wilds, Karate stopped short, man, I can't read, and pulled me aside. It seemed like we were nearing a site of some interest, the old remains of what she described as the Pale Travelers. It sounded like it was worth investigating. Show location on map. Okay, we've got an old camp there. I'm going to check out this mystery thing quick. Approach the shaman hut. We approached a peculiar hut. A peculiar. Peculiar. I don't know why I was an art to that. Anyway, peculiar hut. A native shaman called us inside, her wild eyed stare boring into us from the shadows. Trade. Very slowly, the shaman got out a small crate and presented her wares. So she's got. I. Okay, tribal artifacts. Coco leaves. Religious icon or hallucinogen. Okay. Lick to indulge in a mind bending experience as long term mental side effects. Toad. Uh, let's see. Gosh, I wish I knew how much everything was worth. There we go. Took some effort, but I made a deal with the shaman. Okay. Karate. Oh, I use it. So decrease loyalty on anybody that isn't a local, but I can use it as much as I want. Okay. Sure. Well, it gives me enough loyalty to get out here. I like the cooldown. That's a neat, neat thing. Obviously, losing the loyalty is probably bad, but I don't know if I'm going to be here long enough for that to actually have deleterious effects yet. We approached the abandoned camp, hoping to find supplies and possibly answers. Unfortunately, a group of scavenging hyenas was already there and attacked on sight. Roll dice. Select an attack die. Target an enemy. Attack again. Okay. And reroll. I see. Blank die are added automatically. Last die, add the last die as well. So the the doctor can heal. Okay, inspire ally. Increases damage by 100%. Inspire the anthropologist? Okay. Weak punch the enemy. End turn. I get it. Okay, so we've got Tally Ho, Weak Punch, and Crushing Bow. Blow. What's this icon? Damage is just 12. Okay. Let's start with Tally Ho. A bit of bonus damage. Not the greatest. But I do have a fi fair bit more. Okay. Is it... Can I kill it? Looks like I can. Oh, this is an Inspire. I guess we'll give it to the Anthropologist again. Well, no doctoring today. But we do kill the hyenas. And we get stuff. 
We took what we could and cautiously approached the old campsite. Perhaps there were valuables that the hyenas hadn't destroyed. Character is ready to promote. Big game hunter. Promote. So, where does it say loyalty? They're injured. Loyalty is one out of four. Good to know. So, increases their max HP. It increases the damage and vulnerability for Tally Ho. Boost. Vulnerable. You can spend a die to increase the vulnerable amount. There's also Cracking Wallop. 9 damage. Boost for 11. Plus 16% chance to something? Cool. Alright, search the camp. Ordered a search of the area. A feeling of dread prickling the back of my neck. I hope my trek would avoid the fate of these sorry explorers. Among the camp stores, I found a tattered field journal. Within were the notes of an unknown adventurer. Reading the account, it seemed he had fallen prey to the arrogance of many explorers and met his death after reje rejecting warnings from the natives. I did come across one intriguing passage. Enormous structure, architecture unknown. Technology far beyond our own. Let alone these island savages, what purpose could it hold? He went on to give detailed instructions to this strange structure. Fascinating. I simply had to visit. Okay. Well, we might as well go peek at whatever this mountain thing is and try and get up there. Hey! Looks like we got a campsite, too. Okay, so who got promoted? He did. Looks like promotions also increase loyalty. Okay. If I use the old diary, open it once more. Okay, so that doesn't help. We also have the toads, but let's approach the waterfall. We arrived at a magnificent waterfall. The water cooled the air, creating a fresh breeze. Rest. We settled down for the evening. The mood was tense as I sat by the campfire. At the urging of my comrades, I told a small anecdote of my travels that evening. I told them of an incident from my travels in Egypt where a linguistic mis misunderstanding had led me to propose marriage to the local guide. He let me down gently enough, but it was a lesson to always take care when navigating the local culture. One never knows what dangers await. Now, it doesn't look like I run out of supplies. Like, we don't have to worry about food. But I might only be able to rest occasionally here, and there could be dangers. As we prepared for departure, I knew that I'd miss the rumbling of the falling water. This is a truly beautiful place. Okay. As we were laying out our bedrolls, I noticed that the green bushes framing our camp looked somehow familiar. Taking a closer look, I recognized the leaves. This was a cocoa plant. Knowing their uplifting effects, I... Oh, coca plant. So probably cocaine. Knowing their uplifting effects, I gathered what I could before we went to sleep that night. Yeah, so maybe I can just kind of hang out and rest. I bet there's a... I, I bet there are bad effects if I actually stick around for too long. But... We're at near 100% sanity, so I'll take it. I wonder if I can come back to the waterfall. I'd like that. Yeah, looks like I can. Looks like this is also a small map. So, my assumption is... Clearing this run is not... Ooh. Uh, clearing this run might be a short endeavor. Anyway, approach the ancient structure. Oof. The haunting shape of the structure was like nothing I had seen in all my travels. The m the purpose was unknowable, but it seemed that it might be some kind of some kind of great ancient machine. As we approached, Karate began to tremble, panic in her face. She frantically warned us that their Pelikau gods would not tolerate intrusion on the sacred place. Almer worries. Roll. Uh, we failed. The more we talked, the more Karate was convinced I was a fool. Eventually, she had enough. Spitting curses, she fled the site, leaving us to our fate. Okay, we're also caring too much. Um, I approached the controls of the machine. A strange dread filled me as I drew closer, but the idea of turning back now was unthinkable. Well, 
honestly, if I'm carrying too much, I don't have much sanity. Uh, let's see. Can I drop the old diary? Looks like I can. And let's get rid of the raw meat. There we go. Just so it's not yelling at me. Approach the controls in the machine. A strange dread filled me as I drew closer, but the idea of turning back was unthinkable. As I lay my hand on the central crystal, a great creaking and clanking filled the air. The surface grew hot to the touch, and a ghastly purple fog began to pour forth. I fled that, pay uh, fled that place, the billowing fog chasing me back to my ship. I still ached with curiosity, but one must survive if one's to make great discoveries. Okay. We... Well, I think we doomed the natives. Oh. Interesting. The purple fog here is the same that's surrounding the whole island. <laughs> we really did just kind of do a number on the poor people that live around here. I okay, well we're in trouble. Oh we're in trouble. Okay, there's something about a boost. Select cracking wallop. Select to die of the same color. 41% chance to stun. Ooh, that's in dangage. Finish combat, use your boosts. Okay, got no boost. But I do have a heal heal her. Because I don't think the heal gets rid of poison. Reroll dice. End turn. So I guess the stun didn't work. Stun dice can't be used. Okay. make it way more vulnerable. Give it a big punch. Can't re-roll. That's fine. It doesn't look like we get killed by the web ally. Okay. Reroll dice. Gives me just enough to kill it. The creature was dead, the path to the ship clear. I sprinted madly for it, the breath burning in my lungs. Um... Okay, our sanity... ...is bad. Put my tongue on the rough surface of the toad. I felt a euphoria overtake me as reality began to waver and distort. Maria Ainsworth ranted about mystical forces at play in these strange lands. Typical superstitious nonsense. Well, that didn't slow me down at all. Let's lick another toad. Notice that Antoine Rogo's temper seems shorter these days. But we are saying, onwards! Whew, that's bad for my sanity. Set sail! The dark fog had almost overtaken the ship as we scrambled aboard, the captain hurrying to set her in motion. As we sailed away, we watched as it rapidly swallowed the whole island behind us. We did not know what would have happened if we had stayed, but I did not want to find out. After a time, the fog itself dissipated, leaving empty ocean behind where the island once was. What new strangeness was this? View map. <laughs> what map? I arrived in Paris with a sigh. During the past weeks, I had thought of nothing but the mysterious island and the great machine I had found. I ached to return, but needed to resume my role as director of the expo 
Exposition Universal. Universal? I would would have to find someone else to uncover the island's secrets. I pondered the challenges ahead. The difficulty this new explorer would face. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Restart expedition. Wipe year. Wipe campaign. Oh, that's nice. So, wipe year starts you over. Restart expedition seems reasonable. So let's start with that one. So, after death, return to Paris as if nothing happened. Restart the current year with a new party, or campaign is over. I honestly, I like me some roguelikes, but I like my roguelikes when resetting only just kicks me back a couple of, uh, well, a couple of minutes. You know, Binding of Isaac, you lose a run, you're maybe, what, 20 minutes into a run? No big deal. You lose a run of, uh, let's say, Erratus Lord of the Dead. That's like a 15-hour experience or more, uh, depending on how fast you're playing. And maybe I'm overestimating a little bit. Maybe maybe it was only like nine. But that's that's still a lot of time to start over. Especially because roguelikes don't actually get good until like halfway through. Because before then, you're just kind of weak garbage and you really have to build your way up. Anyway, gathering together in the most accomplished... or. Gathering together the most accomplished explorers in Paris, I looked closely at each. Who would become my new right hand? Scient okay, anthropologist, scientist of native cultures, creates anthropological studies that generate fame as you learn more about a tribe, or big game hunter, rugged trophy hunter, expert in putting down dangerous beasts and other threats in the wild. Let's go with the an anthropologist. Well, this is cute. Art style is a little hard to look at sometimes, but that's okay. I looked out on the expedition, er, exposition grounds with a smile on my lips. Malin had chosen me to uncover the secrets of the islands. I vowed not to let her down. My heart pounded with anticipation of the fame and glory that lay before me, but I would need to hire some assistance. Paris. The expo grounds in Paris is your home between expo expeditions. Each location in the city has a different purpose. Okay, well... Maybe only have access to one of these right now. I entered the famed Boussole Casse, the Broken Compass, and surveyed my surroundings. Renowned as a meeting place for would-be explorers, it was a likely place to find eager adventurers to join my trek. Recruit. Gave word that I was looking for reliable companions to join my expedition. Soon I've gathered a small set of candidates to choose from. Hunting dog. Finds a quail every 25 days. Increased damage when using guns, and allows resting for free. Okay, hunting dog. Do I truly want to recruit Spike the hunting dog? Yes. Thanking his trainer, I gave Spike a welcome scratch behind the ears. He wagged his tail happily. Okay, so maybe I get more party members later. I merged again into the bustle of the exp exposition grounds. Found myself emerge immersed. Okay, so it doesn't look like I can get any more. Resting for free would have actually been kind of nice, but, dog. In my days leading up to the expedition, rumors had been circulating about new islands that had been found, similar to the one Malin had stumbled upon. Sifting through these rumors, I planned my course based on the those that seemed most likely to contain grains of truth. A map in stone, golden pyramid. Map in stone. Oh, we can even see. Rating, budget. Let's probably start small, work our way up. So... Circles of standing stones are rumored to lead the way to a mysterious lost treasure. It's like sponsor. Malin had connections with mysterious and secret explorer clubs, each of which was prepared to fund my expedition. The Royal Avalon Society was a British organization created to learn about the wide, undiscovered world. It was a venerable, prestigious club with a strict code of honor. Lux Labs, gosh, on the other hand, was a reliable or a relative newcomer. An American corporation founded by Thomas Edison. They used expeditions to field test experimental technology. The Taishi Academy, finally, came from the Far East. Rumor was that they investigated dark supernatural influences in the world. Assuming one believes that sort of thing. Okay, so working for each will unlock unique items and characters. 
Cubs are funding your expedition and will claim all leftover provisions when the expedition is complete. Yeah, let's go with the Avalon Society. Screw Thomas Edison. It was my last night in Paris, and I decided to celebrate over drinks. I wish they had picked a better inventor. I, I realize that Edison is the easy go-to, but Edison is just an, a bit of a monster, and so I always hate it when he gets lionized over other people. Not necessarily the Tesla was always better, but, like, there are... I mean, their works... Uh, the light bulb was not invented by either of them. It was invented by... Gosh. You know what? I want to actually look this up, because it's, uh, it's mildly important. Okay. So, I'll own this. I'm wrong, actually. Edison actually did invent the light bulb. Although, I think uh, some uh, a chemist had, like laid the groundwork, it was actually Edison that did invent the light bulb. It didn't make it practical, though, and the reason why I bring this up a little bit is because I've seen the name Louis Latimer thrown around a bunch, uh, who is a black inventor that I literally had never heard of, even though I had heard the story of light bulbs being invented for 30 years of my life. And so recently I, I heard the name thrown around as the actual true inventor of the light bulb, which is false. Uh, he didn't invent it. What he did was he was the one that pioneered using a carbon filament inside the light bulb, which actually made it a practical and possible thing. And then he was the one that actually was going around spreading the design so that light bulbs became easy to use. I don't really know where the story goes beyond that because there's not a whole lot about the guy online that I could immediately find. I'm sure if I actually read some books on the matter, I'd, I'd find more, but this is like cursory Googling. Um, but... <sighs> I don't know. Great men of history. I don't like necessarily giving all the credit to one guy because, yeah, once again, who knows? Maybe Edison might not have figured it out if it weren't for this guy. And also, just like, ever since I found out about Edison electrocuting an elephant, which I'm I'm pretty sure that one's true, I've just always been like, I don't, I don't like the guy. Is a thing, right? I, I'm just gonna look this up. Huh. No. So apparently, even wow, I should look up Edison some more. I am, I am propagating misinformation that people have spread considerably. And I wish I wish I was in a better place. Place? I was in a better position to actually educate here. But all I can do is just admit that I have I was wrong. Uh, and then try and at least correct the record when I am wrong. Uh, so apparently, Edison had nothing to do with the elephant's death. Uh, that the only reason why it specifically was linked to Edison was the fact that it was electric uh it was electricity which you know very much was an Edison thing at the time but no this was uh the, you might have actually heard the story of Topsy the elephant who had killed three of its handlers uh more or less beforehand and so they were going to i think they were going to poison it or they were going to execute the elephant one way or another because it was a danger and they eventually settled on electricity for whatever reason and I guess the myth grew from there that uh, that Edison did it as kind of a uh, dig against Nikola Tesla. But I guess that's wrong. I I really need to brush up on my history. Unfortunately, a lot of these little factoids, I either never learn or I learn half-truths spread via... I mean, honestly, people like me who just keep spreading it on. It's like the uh, the myth that people didn't start dreaming in color until color TV came out. And in reality... It's sort of true. Uh, I looked this one up a little bit, and the answer is people started dreaming in black and white more when black and white television was a thing because that's what they were consuming. That's what their brain was engaged in. So when they were asleep, they were processing black and white imagery as opposed to real life in imagery sometimes. And so when color TV came out, people noticed that they'd started having color dreams again, uh, not having realized that they had switched at some point. Or maybe they had. I don't know. Uh, but that that's kind of a fun myth that people throw around. It's like, oh, you know, color TV may be, made people dream in color. And it's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, man. I should look up more common historical myths. 
And just so I'm I'm always at least relatively credibly correct. Oh well, anyway. I still don't like Edison. But maybe I should look at why I don't like him. Because I think most of the basis for why I don't like Edison is wrong, apparently. Well then, anyway. As I sipped my drink that evening, I was approached by Percy Fawcett, a famous explorer and hunter of the lost city of Z. Star starstruck, I chatted with a celebrity about inconsequential things for a while before he introduced the topic of dis the disappearing islands. I smiled and deflected, pretending that I knew nothing. Fawcett pressed harder, but I would not reveal Malin's secrets to a complete stranger. Eventually, he grew impatient in the face of my evasions and bid me good night, striding off with an air of irritation. Eccentric fellow, if I do say so myself, to adventure! Alright. Oh, walking near mosquitoes will afflict a party member with malaria. Be careful. Ooh, that's bad. My ship arrived, encountering a small supply vessel. I wonder what the Royal Avalon Society had in store for me. The shopkeeper hailed me loudly and handed over a small package, a gift from Malin for my first solo expedition. I was sure I'd prove my... Uh, prove useful. First aid kit, first aid kit, torch, and chocolate. Alright. So I have 70 gold. We do have a... We have that spear, probably. That we got from her. So plateau climb costs reduced sanity. Um... <laughs> oh, cocoa wine. Usable on the map. Delicate wine of intense smell and dark cover color every time a new delight sanity 40 uh, recovers 40 sanity however blackout and travel up to six tiles randomly backfire chance I, it's interesting okay i'm gonna buy all of those and then we're just going to go booze town uh let's trade one back grab oh they're 12. Okay, we'll get a chocolate. My equipment chosen, I considered if there was yet more to be done before I landed on the islands. Begin expedition. Legends told of a great treasure among these islands, but there was only one problem. No one knew where it was located. Fortunately, the Royal Avalon Society had found a clue. An island where natives told of ancient circles of stone. They were rumored to lead to the treasure. I need to find the stone circles to uncover the true location of the treasure I sought. Well, this is a neat game. Oh, and I actually have other party members. I got these two that I guess just came with the anthropologist. Gimbal. The gimbal spins faster as you get closer to a goal location. So this thing. Now, am I off the boat? Why did we land here? This is dumb. Well, I don't have any explosives either. So, let me take a look at this. I guess... I guess I'm just going to have to go here. We'll see what happens. Oh, that gives me... That gives me some range. Okay, approach cave. Study the native tribe, find stone circles, and there is a person there. Oh, approach cave. I peered into a small tunnel. From where I stood, I could see nothing but darkness inside. Enter cave. Cool. There we go. Success. We also had the torch. Taking care in the dark, I managed to find a path without further problems. At the far end of the cave, I found a beautiful grotto with, astonish with an astonishing variety of mushrooms. Take the mushrooms. Take the mushrooms. It has potent healing abilities. Take water. Stocked up on drinkable water. Okay. How much water can I carry? The answer is... Oh. I see. Well, you know what? I don't think we're going to be going through the desert anytime soon anyway. So let's ignore that. Okay. So let's, let's go talk to the natives. And then figure out what we're going to do from there. Natives approach. Well, it looks like there is kind of a neat meta progression here. We're getting... Fame, presumably and experience, which probably means subsequent runs are obviously better and more well-equipped. Okay. 
Our first meeting with the people of this land was an encounter with a pair of scouts. They reacted with great surprise at our strange appearance. It wasn't long before we were able to, co able to communicate. And they had many questions. Firstly, where did I come from? Tell the truth. They seemed doubtful of my descriptions of the distances I had crossed, but nodded politely nonetheless. They were not yet finished. Their second question was simple. What did I want here in their territory? Learn about their culture. They were delighted by my interest. Gesturing grad grandly, they told me about their mighty god, responsible for both bountiful times and catastrophes. He inspired love and awe in equal measure. Their other questions, largely, largely inconsequential. I was relieved when it ended, and I pondered what to do next. I had questions of my own. Uh, let's see. Ask about the village. They told me of the nearest settlement, giving me detailed directions for the route. Thanks to them and carefully updated my map. It was time to go. Boy, that's a bit that's that's a bit far away, but that's fine. Okay, I like this game. It's it's got charm to it. I I think with a game like this, I still wish it was less based on reality, if that makes sense. That you know, get rid of Earth, set it in an alternate universe, have like bend the rules more. Literally, just give me wizards. I I really want to play uh, a game very similar to this, where it's effectively you take like a standard high fantasy Dungeons and Dragons style world, uh, but tech it up until it's about this tech level instead of you know pure fantasy, and have similar things to this, but you know instead of just fighting giant spiders, we're fighting. Uh, literal trolls drakes dragons wyverns manticores stuff like that and maybe that is actually something you fight in this game i just i want to i want to be an anthropologist wizard i also just um there is a sense of grounding when it comes to you know these mysteries and i mean obviously they've shown off some magical artifacts so maybe it's not so bad uh but it i i think i would be so much more interested in exploring a world that has no connection to my own because then I can feel like I'm truly immersed as opposed to wanting to just go read about it on Wikipedia or uh, in an actual book or something. But is what it is. Anyway, I guess before we go, I want to take a quick look at some of these characters. So, village rest sanity per night plus one, mushroom sanity plus ten, and dog quail and a hunting bonus. Admittedly, it does look like the dog can't carry as much, but that's unsurprising, honestly. Okay, duration is 10, so we can't use the torch too much. Alright, well, one way or another, I think this is a good stopping point for now. I'm amenable to playing more, but my schedule is packed with a billion other games, so it depends slightly on what you guys think, because I could easily play more of this, or I could just leave it as a one-off. It's got potential, but it also seems like the kind of game that you play a lot for a while. So, with all that said, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know, and lets me know that you want to see more. And if you do, let me know in the comments below as well. Uh, but otherwise, I guess with all that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.